Let's praise a good God. He's a faithful God. Every praise is due him. He is worthy. And we come to lift you up, God, because you are truly worthy. We want to sing every praise to you today. The song simply says every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, every word of worship with, one with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on and join in with me and sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, we're going to go a little higher. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Sing glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. We're going to go up higher just one more time. Every praise is to our God. Say every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Help me say. God my healer and he's my deliverer yes he is yes he is God my savior and he is my healer my deliverer yes he is Yes he, yes, he yes, he yes, he yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise, every praise is to our, is to our God. God. Say every word of worship word with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. When you see me clapping my hands, every praise. When you see me shouting for joy, every praise, he's been so good. Every praise, every praise, every praise. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Every praise, you never let me down. Hallelujah to our God. Bless the Lord. It's so good to be with you again. The Lord has been good to us. We thank him for his grace, his mercy, his tender love, and his covenant uh, that he's forever sustaining. Uh, we just honor the Lord for your presence, and uh, we have been looking for a few weeks now on uh, corporate and cell ministry, the responsibilities and how all things work together. And today is corporate and cell ministries. This will be uh, message number four, 
And we also want to correlate it with uh, other scriptures that will help enhance our understanding of what it is just simply to flow as a corporate body. Uh, we're going to continue reading uh, a scripture we read last week and also make some addition. But in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 11 and 12, we mentioned that the Apostle Paul uh, was writing to the Romans and he made this statement. And I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads as thus. This is Romans chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. It says, For I am longing to see you that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. That's the New Revised Standard Version. And I want to also add to that uh, John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32. Uh, and by, from the Passion Translation, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom in your lives. And that is the Passion Translation. And we, when you combine these two scriptures together, first of all, uh, if you will recall from last week's teaching that when the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1, verse 11, when he says, I long or I desire to come to you or to see you to impart some truth, uh, some spiritual gift. Remember, we mentioned that in the uh, old King James that it says uh, to share or to give. And we mentioned that the Greek word there, uh, metadidomai, it does not mean to give away something uh, totally, but it means to share something. So Paul is not uh, communicating to them that he is going to come as many times people have thought, and he's going to actually impart to them a spiritual gift. What he's saying is, I'm coming to you, I long to come to you, and I want to share with you out of the realm of the Spirit some of those things that God has given me. So he uses the term spiritual gift, uh, the charisma, or that which God has given me. I want to come to you and share it with you. And then he mentions that uh, you may be edified and strengthened, but he also says that I also may be encouraged, we may be mutually encouraged. And then Jesus talking to his disciples, in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 30. He says, if you continue in my word uh, or embrace my word, he says, then you will show that you are my followers or my pupils indeed. And he says that the truth that you embrace or the word that you embrace, that word that you experience and embrace, it will cause a freedom in you. It will make you free. It will liberate you to walk in all those truths. So if you combine those particular scriptures together, we're talking about what Paul said and we're talking about what Jesus said. So basically what we want to look at uh, today uh, in our message today is basically look at some uh, definite statements of truth about what corporateness is, about what sharing is, about how we need to live and flow in the grace of God uh, to actually build up one another and to effectively do what God has called us to do and the kingdom of God and the body of Christ. Uh, and of course, as you notice, uh, the New Testament as a whole, it always uh, portrays the uh, church as the body of Christ. Uh, body, one body with many members with various parts. And uh, it always shows it as a corporate body, uh, mutually flowing together, interdependent, uh, each one counting on the other. And it's a way of building up the body so that the body literally can uh, fulfill this missional calling, which is to reach all of the world for the kingdom of God and with the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we want to basically look at some truths today. Now, the thing that's emphasis on the truth, the reason why we need to have the truth about it is because modern uh, postmodernism, which is simply uh, people taking everything that exists and altering it in certain ways. And basically what postmodernism says is that there can be no uh, objective truth, that all truth is subjected, which what they mean by that is that you really can't say that there are any absolute truths. That truth may be truth to one person, but it's not to another person. So they basically make truth subjective, meaning that it's only true if a particular person it feels like it's true to him or her. But uh, they say it can't be objective. You can't basically take anything and say these are absolute truths. However, with that kind of mindset, 
it's also stated that you can't say the Bible uh, basically presents absolute truths. And that's what we have today uh, in our culture is that if you claim anything absolute, then it's based on intolerance. So when you talk about the word of God, that God's word is absolute and they're absolute truths, that there are things that God has stated and those things are absolutely true. And that's what Jesus was saying. If you embrace the truth, not some subjective truth, but the absolute truth, is truth whether or not whether we believe it or not. If Jesus makes a statement, if he's taught something, then it is true. So that is absolute truth. Then what we do is we take the absolute truth and we receive it. And yes, it becomes subjective to us, but not because we made it truth, but because we receive it as truth. It is God's absolute truth, and we as the subject, we receive it, and the absolute truth will work in us. So Jesus says, uh, if you continue in my word, uh, my word, which is the absolute truth, you are my disciples indeed. And the truth that you experience, the absolute truth that you receive, it will cause you to be free and flow in the things of the kingdom of God. So we believe that the Bible for the believer is certainly absolute truth. And we want to look at some absolute truths today that pertains to the body of Christ and our giftings and our grace. And like Paul, how do we come together and share certain things with one another? And so we, we're going to basically look at five particular absolute truths today from the Word of God based upon the corporate body. And every person, this is God's absolute truth. And what we want to do is receive that so that we can experience that. Yes, it becomes subjective truth to us out of the absolute truth of God. We take it and make it our own and practice it and experience it. And then we flow in the freedom that God wants us to flow in. And the first thing that we can say that is absolute is that you were supernaturally placed in the body of Christ. Every believer has been supernaturally placed in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says that uh, we have all by one spirit, one spirit of God, we have all been placed, or the old King James said, baptized uh, into one body by the spirit of the Lord. That is not subject. That is an absolute truth. If you are born again, if you uh, follow Jesus Christ, at some point in time, you embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And at that point in time, when you open your heart to him, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit then placed you into baptized baptizo. He placed you into the body of Christ. There are many members, but you have been placed and you have that was supernaturally. You say, well, why was it supernaturally? Because it was done by the spirit. If it was done by the spirit, then it was supernatural. The Holy Spirit is not a natural spirit. It is a supernatural spirit it is a super spirit. So uh, that is supernatural. So you have been supernaturally placed in the body of Christ. Now, a lot of times people get kind of uh, weird about the supernatural. The supernatural just simply means it's not natural. It came from something above the natural. And the Holy Spirit, praise God, is not natural. It is above, so it is a supernatural. So a lot of times people say, well, I don't know anything about the supernatural. Yes, you do. It was the supernatural Spirit of God that, that drew you to Jesus Christ. Jesus said himself that no person can come to him except they be drawn by the Father. So it is the supernatural power of God by his Holy Spirit that drew you to Jesus Christ, that brought you to the place of saying Jesus is Lord. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that no one will say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you, it's not a natural thing. It is the Spirit of God, as we hear the Word of God, opens our heart and our mind and illuminates us. And then we begin, we begin to see Jesus as the true living Son of God. And so it is by the Spirit that we declare that Jesus is Lord. So uh, just get in your mind that the supernat you've already begun to flow in the supernatural. Now the problem is, is that a lot of people think that everything supernatural has to be spectacular. And that's where we get confused. Supernatural simply means it is not natural. God is a supernatural God. God is a spirit. Yes, he's not natural. Jesus became a God, became man, took on humanity. But God never lost his supernatural dimension. So this supernatural God has drawn 
uh, you and me into the body of Christ and placed us in the body of Christ. So uh, you're supernatural. You, you, all right. There's supernatural things going on in your life. You're born again. That's your beginning, your introduction. When Jesus drew you by the spirit of God, uh, that was supernatural activity. Secondly, your special grace or gifted area in the body of Christ is chosen by God. Your special area or special gifted area in the body of Christ was not chosen by you, not selected by you, not chosen by a committee. It was chosen by God himself. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 11 and, and verses 27 and 28, it talks about that uh, the Spirit, it talks about the uh, different manifestations of the Spirit. And it says in, uh, in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians verse 11, it says all of these manifestations, all of these uh, functions of the Spirit uh, with, that you see flowing through people's lives, it is, it is the Spirit's will, as the Spirit will, not as the human being wills, but it is as the Spirit will that these particular gifted areas are manifested. What happens if you try on your own to manifest something, it's just going to be natural and it's going to be messed up. But if we simply learn how to flow in the supernatural, remember that you're already in the supernatural. Being in the body of Christ is supernatural because the new birth is not a natural thing. It is a, a supernatural thing. We are born by the Spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born by water and by the Spirit. That is supernatural. So if you're born again, you're already in the supernatural. And so then the graces and the gifts that God wants, they are also supernatural. But so the supernatural working of God's grace and power for salvation is inside of you. But also, glory to God, the supernatural gifting and charisma that God has chosen to place in your life, it is a supernatural phenomenon. It doesn't mean that it's spectacular. It doesn't mean there's going to be stars and sparkling and all of that, but it's supernatural. All right, praise God. So you have been placed in the body of Christ uh, supernaturally, and whatever God has placed in you, it is God's choice. Uh, so that's why people basically, uh, you can't petition God for the committee and tell God, well, I want this gift or I want that gift. No, the gift that you have in you it was chosen by God. Now, that ought to be a blessing to your life, that God Almighty himself have chosen the particular gifted area that he wants you to flow in. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I think God knows exactly what he wants to place in each person and how God wants that to function. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that you have a supernatural gift or charisma or capacity. You have a supernatural gift or charisma or capacity. And that's why Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 11, I long to come to you that I may impart or I may share with you some spiritual gift, metadetomia. I may share with you something that I have in me. I want to share it with you. Not that I can take what's out of me and give it to you and then the gift is in you. No, but the gift that's in me, I want to come to you and the things that are flowing in me out of that gifting, out of the Holy Spirit's work, out of that supernatural realm, out of the revelation, out of the insight. Paul said, I want to come and I want to share some of those truths with you so that you might be strengthened and you might be encouraged. And, and also, he says uh, in verse 12 of, of ch uh, chapter one of Romans, also that I I will receive from you some of the things that God has placed in you, and all of us will be mutually uh, edified. So when believers get together, every believer that's together, they're in the supernatural realm of God. They were brought in by the Holy Spirit, placed in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Uh, also then placed, there was certain charisma, certain grace gifts placed in every person in the body, and that says that God's choosing. Uh, God says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, for God have set in the body. It says, for God have set in the body. And it talks about uh, government. It talks about helps. It talks about administration. It talks about gifts of healings and all. But it says that God set him in the body. No human being came along and just designated what particular gift another, any person would have. It is God that have made that choice. So you ought to be praising God and not uh, being competitive or jealousy because what God has put in you it's what God wants in you, 
and you have, the, you have a supernatural capacity in you to flow in the body of Christ. As I said, now you can't tr- get in to try to make it all spectacular, meaning you're always trying to make something. Blah, 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 blah. No, supernatural is that. Supernatural just means that when you were brought to the body of Christ. Yes, yeah, some people may have uh, run down the aisle or ran down the aisle or all kind of stuff, but some folks just sat quietly and received the Lord Jesus Christ. So, but, but the same Holy Spirit worked the, the birth in everybody. And some people weren't screaming and running, but the supernatural work was going on. So if we could help people get out of this thing, that everything that is supernatural has to always be spooky. No, supernaturally simply means that there's something beyond the natural flowing inside. Glory to God, your system. Hallelujah. And you'll understand uh, that we need the supernatural. That's why God had to gift the supernatural in our lives. So you have a supernatural charisma. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, supernatural thing, we're talking about the grace gifts of God, uh, and we're talking about extraordinary power, uh, extraordinary be- beyond natural power that's literally in your system. But now here's the problem with it. We may have that c- supernatural capacity, but the capacity that we have inside of us from God has to be cultivated and developed. And that's where a lot of people quit. Uh, they, they know they have it inside. They know God has placed something supernatural inside of them. But if you don't develop it, if you don't cultivate it. Now, I was brought up on a farm and uh, we, we, we had a field. That field had the capacity to produce a crop. That field had a capacity to, to really break great yield. But what do we have to do? We had to go out into the field. We had to cultivate that soil. We had to work it. We had to soften it. We had to put things in it. And as we cultivated that soil, we were preparing that soil uh, actually to be able to receive the seed that we would plant later. And that seed, praise God, would then bring forth fruit. So it's the same way with you. You may have a gift in you, and you do. If you're born again, you have one in you. However, if you don't cultivate it, if you don't ever do anything, if you just sit around and never exercise it, nothing will ever happen to it. It'll just be a dead thing. But if you will take that and say, God, I have this gifting in me. I have this gifting in me to be an exhorter. I have this gifting in me to to bring people into your presence. I have this gifting in me to teach. I have this gifting in me to prophesy. Then it is your responsibility to get before God and allow the Spirit of God to work with you so that you are not always held by the natural and you learn how to flow in the supernatural. Praise God. That's all it is. And you have to learn how to develop it, learn how to develop it. That means you got to do something with it. You can talk about it and read about it and everything else, but nothing gets developed unless you exercise it. All right. That's why a lot of times people have what we call leadership uh, setting. Uh, Look, you cannot make a leader by putting them in a seminar. Uh, Leadership is developed by cultivation. God may have the calling of a leadership on you, but it will never work if you don't do something and cultivate it. You have to work it and develop it, exercise it, put it to use, use it. You can't be lazy. Laziness will always keep your charisma at the same level. But it's the will of God that everything he put in you, glory to God, everything in you, it is the will of God that is cultivated and developed. And if you stay before God, you will find out, praise God, there will be a passion in you. You say, how do I know what's in me? You, how do you, the way you know what's in you, most of all, a lot of people can tell you stuff, and that's good too. But the way you know is that you check the passion you have. Where you have a strong passion, that is God's way of trying to tell you. There's something inside you that you didn't put in there by natural birth. I put it in there by my spirit, and therefore you find there's a burning inside of your life. And you're never satisfied if you're not flowing in that. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a supernatural. It's a passion. Glory to God. I have a passion to help people understand the Word of God. I have a passion to study. I have a passion. But it was put there by the Holy Spirit. But I have to cultivate it and develop it. Hallelujah. And I'm cultivating and developing it right now. I guess as I'm hollering and screaming and all that, but not because I'm mad, because I'm excited. Praise God. And that's why Paul wanted to get to Rome. And when you know you got something in you that God gave you, you want to get around people. You want to share it. You want to give it to people. You want to share stuff with people. But you also need folks to share something with you. Amen. You're not a lone ranger. You don't know everything. Somebody has something that God has imparted them that you need and I need and everybody needs. But when we flow together corporately, 
then we're able to strengthen, praise God, one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So you say, well, what am I doing? Just, just, just develop it. Just same way with praying. If you don't ever pray, you're never going to cultivate and develop prayer. You'll be saying the same prayer you were saying 20 years ago. But if you'll get before God, amen, and just begin to pray, praise God, and begin to pray, and let the spirit of prayer get on you, and, and then that passion get on you, and you'll find yourself praying longer than you thought you was going to pray. If you want to praise, everybody's been equipped to praise God and magnify and worship God. And, and, and if you want to worship God, start worshiping God. That's the way to do it. Develop it. Praise God. You'll find out you can praise and worship God through all kind of stuff. Why? Because you cultivate and you develop the gift. You develop it and you have a desire. Whatever's going on, you praise God. Why? Because what's in you is there by the Spirit of God and it's supernatural. Fourthly, your supernatural capacity, and everybody has a supernatural capacity, gifting, prevents circumstances from robbing you of your joy. Your supernatural capacity, the fact that the supernatural glory to God whoo, flows through your system. Hallelujah. That means that when things are not going so favorable in your life, you'll find out that the gifting in your life still won't work. You'll find out when things are not going perfect, you'll find out that the prophetic in you will still want to prophesy. You'll find out whatever's inside of you still wants to function irregardless of the circumstances. You might find a time of discouragement, but you'll find out into that. You'll find that that supernatural in you. You'll see it rising up. Pray. You can never bear it forever. You, you might be quiet for a little while, but if it's in you and you begin to move. That's what Paul told Timothy. He said, stare up the gift and you put a flame, flame to you. Boy, it's in you. Nobody has to lay hands on you and put it in you again. It's in you. It's supernatural. However, if you've allowed life to cut it down, then you need to stare it up. Don't tell God to stare it up. You stare it up. Get busy busy and do something with it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you have a supernatural capacity. Doesn't make any difference about circumstance. That's why Paul could say in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you remember he was praying to God. He asked the Lord to uh, remove this messenger of Satan that was a, a buffing him about. And the Lord let him know, my grace, hallelujah, my grace is sufficient. My chorus, my favor, my strength is sufficient for you. Huh? My strength is made perfect in your human frailty. And Paul said, when I found out, praise God, he says, what did he say? He said, I'll boast now. I'll boast in my infirmity. I'll boast when I find out I'm humanly frail. He says, I'll boast when there's insult. I'll boast. Why? Because Paul discovered that the grace of the flowing of the supernatural in his life Hallelujah. He could still function and do what God wanted him to do, even when the circumstances was in opposition to him and all of those kind of things. A lot of times, uh, you know, if you were just natural, that means every whatever went on in the natural would govern whether or not you could honor God. But, but because there's a supernatural dimension in your life, your whole new life, the new birth in you is supernatural. It's not natural. So you, you really, you're, f uh, you're full of the supernatural. And it's time that we cultivate it and and, and get it together and flow together and merge together so that we can uh, be the voice of God in this, this world. And fifthly, uh, you, you learn to serve God with, with God's supply strength. We should learn to serve God with God's supply strength. Now in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, uh, you start there at verse number 7 and go down. It talks about loving one another. But in, in uh, chapter uh, 4, verse 11, it says, whatever particular supernatural, whatever charisma, whatever gifting God has placed upon you. He said, learn how to flow in it by the grace or by the strength that God supplies. Hallelujah. By the strength that God supplies. Now the old King James said, by the strength that God giveth. Uh, and, and the word giveth here or supply is where we get our word choragoth from. The Greek word choragoth, where we actually get our English word chorus. And chorus, uh, back in ancient Greece time, it would be a person that would take on a group of, uh, they, they always had these, uh, what we would call today, uh, battling of the, of the choruses, of the choirs. They would get various uh, chorus groups together, and they would actually put them in a, a, a contest and see which particular group could uh, flow the best, and they would get a prize. But a chorus person, a choragot, 
that person would be one that would be responsible for taking a particular group of people, and that person would, uh, out of his or her own expense, would buy everything that was needed to make that course uh, function in a way that would be, uh, I mean, just uh, magnificent. And so the word that's used here is the same word. So, so Peter says, learn, if whatever gift you have, learn how to flow in it out of the kogoriga. In other words, let, learn how to flow out of it just like this core grapher person would be responsible for the expense of paying and doing everything that was necessary. He's saying, learn how to flow in what you have at all the expense of God, at all the strength of God. Don't, you don't have to be responsible trying to sponsor yourself. In other words, God has paid all the price. God has given everything that you need. God has everything that you need, uh, and God will praise it. In other words, if we will learn how to yield to God, then just like this person that would be responsible for getting and leading this chorus and supplying everything, God will supply every bit of strength we need to flow together, to join together, and we can be like those choruses in on ancient Greek. We can be before the world and God can bring us together. And, and when you bring a course together, there's supposed to be harmony, synchronization, flowing together. And that's what happens in the spiritual realm, in the supernatural realm, when the Holy Spirit can have our attention the way we are and we start flowing in the strength that God gives, then everybody's depending on nobody else's strength but the strength that God gives. And God gives strength through one, God gives strength through other, and we come together and we bring strength, edification, praise God. And we are able to declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Praise God. God is, is a wonderful God. God has gifted us all. So nobody can say, I don't have a gift. If, if, you, if you're saying you don't have a gift, you're lying. Amen? You're just lying. That's, that's all it is. Now, if you don't want to use it, don't want to work it, don't want to cultivate it, don't blame God. Don't blame anybody else. You know, when I, my mother was living uh, for, for a long part of my life, I don't know how I know, don't know what it is, but I can hear music and I know when it's being played right or wrong. I don't know how I know that. I know when something's missing. I know when something's supposed to have gone a certain way. I don't know how I know that. I don't know what it is. And I used to tell my mother, mama this or mama that. And she said, well, why don't you take lessons? I said, mama, I don't have time to take lessons. I got too many things to do. And you know what my mother told me? She says, and until you take time and do something, you're just going to keep walking around and telling me what you hear. And, and you hear this and you don't hear that. And so I start taking lessons and I'm still taking lessons. I'll probably take lessons the rest of my life because it's very stimulating to me. But I have discovered some things in the process. What? I'm cultivating and developing what was inside of me. And what? Uh, at first it was just crazy. You know, it just raggedy, as one, as one brother said. It was almost like speaking in, <laughs> in another language. It was just ragged as it could be. <laughs> but as time went on, uh, it got to be a little bit more smoother and all. And look, whatever you have inside of you, when you first start trying to exercise it or whatever, it might be a little raggedy, uh, you, you know, and everything like this. But, that, but uh, you can't be embarrassed and go high. The best way is to just keep on. Let, yeah, let other folks help you and give you insight and all that, but just get in there. Praise God. I mean, don't stop because you, you were off on... on uh, 10% of it. Don't stop. I mean, praise God for the 90% you got right and know that if you listen to the Holy Spirit, you're going to come back and begin to perfect it. And that's the way God works this thing. Amen. Praise God. So I'm, I'm, I hope you're excited about it. I hope you thank God for the fact that God has put something in you and that God has something supernatural inside of you. And God did not put it in there as a trophy. God put it in there as a demonstration of his grace and his power. And God is expecting us, praise God, to cultivate what we have in us and to develop what we have in us to the glory of God. And that's what it means to serve in a corporate body. We're not spectators. We're not, we don't just sit. We actually participate. We get into it, into the limb of the supernatural and flow with God and, and God flows with us. Praise God. So let me tell you, like uh, Paul told Timothy, if you know there's something inside of you and basically you're paying no attention, then I'm going to tell you to stir it up. I'm going to tell you to put the flame to it. You know how that old country stove was. Uh, you, the coals be in there and nothing's going on. You think it's out. And I saw my grandparents take a stick, 
sort of steer it around, and sometimes you can pour some kerosene or something. Better be very careful because it'll come out for sure. But I'm saying the same thing. If you know this inside of you and every born again, every person that in the kingdom of God, there's a special grip, grace inside of you. And if you know if there's no passion going on, then get before God and tell him you want him just to pour, hallelujah, the oil on you again so that the flames will come forth. Hallelujah. You, you, you might, all right? Now, you can't keep prophesying in your basement or someplace else or in the backyard. You need to bring it on out here in the kingdom of God so that we can, we can use it. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, God is good, and, and he's just a wonderful God. As I mentioned before, uh, the way we started into the supernatural was when God drew us by his spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we confessed him as our Lord and Savior. And you may be looking at us today for the first time or listening for the first time, and you've never yielded your life to Jesus Christ. And you say, well, how am I? No, God doesn't want you to try to work it and make it yourself. All you need to do is simply where you are now in your heart. You just simply need to acknowledge, God, I know by yon shadow of a doubt that you love me, that Jesus died for me, that the blood was shed it for me, and Lord, I thank you that you made a way that I could be forgiven of my sins. And Father, now I want to, in the name of Jesus, I want to receive you as my Lord, praise God, and my Savior. And that's all you need to do. The Spirit of God will work in your heart and make that a reality. And if you said those words, it doesn't take a whole year for you to be born again. It might take a whole year for the Spirit of God to convict you about some things, but you can be born again quickly just like that because it's supernatural. It's supernatural. And you can begin to walk with God. And God is just a good God. And our heart goes out to you. And we'll be praying for you. And at the end of this uh, message today, there will be some announcements made. And we pray that you will uh, get in touch with us. And we can get in touch with you. Uh, and we can help you in your journey. And we can all be a wonderful part of the body of Christ and flow in the supernatural, amen? Not talking about spectacular, goofy stuff, but just the supernatural, meaning that we can flow even with all the natural things going on that are not positive, but because of the supernatural power of God, we can flow in the name of Jesus. So God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you uh, next week, uh, Minister Charlene and then uh, Minister Stevie. I'm going to have a little dental procedure, and I need to rest my jaw, I've been told after that so uh, i'll be ready to go when we see you again amen and let's also remember uh, the family of uh sister sandy foster uh, who uh, passed this friday uh, let's remember the family and uh, pray for them god will comfort them bring strength to them and as we minister to them so god bless you we'll see you the next time amen for further study romans chapter 1 verses 11 through 12 john 8 31 to 32, 1 Peter chapter 4, 7 to 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. God has supplied everything to serve in your gifted grace speciality. He helps you to flow properly in the beautiful course interacting with others in the body. Please contact us through our social media channels if you have any questions and one of our ministers will respond. We want to hear from you. If you have enjoyed this broadcast and it has been a blessing to you, please be sure to like and subscribe to our social media channels. Join us for our Zoom Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. or dial by calling in 1-312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 348-591-8252. And password 591. Join us. If you wish to contribute to the ministry, you may do so safely and securely at our website, www.glhc1.org, and follow the online giving link. Mobile giving at Cash App, dollar sign GLHC Vision, or by mail. Gospel Lighthouse Church, 600 Freebus Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43206. Scan the barcode on your smartphone and it will take you directly to the online giving link at Gospel Lighthouse Church.